Lauren Ryan is a Gamalari woman from the Tamworth region of New South Wales who is a two-time Star Maker finalist and she has just released a new single, Bounce Back. We're going to talk about Star Maker and Bounce Back and other things. Hi, Lauren. Hello. <laughs> Lovely to meet you on Zoom. I actually saw you on stage at Star Maker in April this year and I'll get to that. Um, but I'm actually going to start by saying you grew up in, in and around Tamworth. Does that mean country music was forced on you from a young age? Oh, yes. I wouldn't say forced. Um, I would say very, very welcome. That I just absolutely love country music. Um, I love Tamworth and, you know, everything that it produces um, within the country music space and all of the music that that comes to town and the artists and the stories. And it's just sensory overload, really. Um, <laughs> every festival. And so, yeah, my mom would always listen to country music every car trip. We'd have Uncle Troy's CD in the in the in the player, and you know, like Shania and Brooks and Dunn and Uncle Alan Jackson, and um, yeah, all the all the goodness. Yeah, right. Do you remember your very first Tamworth Country Music Festival, or were you too little to remember? Uh, look, I was probably too little, but um, by the time I was old enough to remember, I can remember like walking down the street. And watching all the buskers and um, dancing around with my my sister, um, going to gigs at like the pub in the Bill Chambers room, and right. and watching uh, my very first gig I remember was a Star Maker winner, um, Warren Warren Derwent, actually um, at the pub. I think that was a couple of years after he won Star Maker, and I just I was like amazed, and my sister pulled me up onto the dance floor. So there's probably some some footage somewhere of two little two little kids dancing around um <laughs> on, a, on a video recorder not on a phone yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> on a on a VHS somewhere right. um, <laughs> so when you so, were that age did you look at those performers and think I want to do that yeah for sure for sure I was always um way too shy though to sing in front of people but I I knew from from being very little like that I always wanted always wanted to do this um I was very inspired yeah so you have this lovely singing voice um and uh, it sounds like a voice that's that you've had for a while and that it you know it's warm and has has these beautiful tones to it so I'm imagining it's not something you just decided on five years ago when did you start singing oh thank you thank you so much um I started singing I guess when I was little I always always loved singing and uh, I did grow up listening to country music, but I have older sisters who uh, have incredible taste in music and they listen to like R&B and hip hop and um, pop music and soul. And so I, was, um, I had my ear and all this stuff when I was when I was little and I always loved I loved soul singers. And so I think I found my voice within within that kind of right. feeling emotive um, vocal mm -hmm. I guess on on some of these CDs that that I'd steal out of my sister's room um <laughs> and so yeah I've, I've been singing since I was since I was young and doing it uh, professionally since I was about 18. Right and in fact the first music you released from what I understand was more on the R&B side of things so clearly you thought that was the direction you were going in but then you came back to country music so what brought you back? Yeah, definitely. Um, just being true to myself. And when I was young, I, I thought I could be Beyonce, but um, no, I need to be Lauren Ryan. And so I sat down and I figured out what that sounds like. And um, it sounds a lot like country music with, with some, with some R&B flavors, I guess, and not straight up R&B. Um, yeah, that's a, that's what it, that's what it is for me. And in fact, on your song Party of One, you do reference Beyonce. You say you can go from Beyonce to Brooks and Dunn. You know, the Party of One is you listening to music at home, which is actually a great way to describe what it's like for a music lover, I think, to sit down and just listen to all the music they like. I love that. Yes, um, that is very much what it's like when you're in the car with me or um, if I'm playing music in the kitchen while I'm making some dinner. It, it goes from... You know, Beyonce to Brooks and Dunn, to Tupac to um, 
gosh, Billy Strings and it's just it's it's wild. I I love I love all music. Um and I'm I'm highly inspired by by everything. But um yeah, all music has a has a home in my playlist. Yeah. <laughs> and you found different homes for certain songs because actually you translated songs into Gamalarai. And I'm wondering when you started doing that. Yeah, I first when I first started to perform and when I first had um I guess my first show on on a real stage it was with um with Uncle Roger Knox who invited me to sing at one of his shows in town here um and it was one of his songs which was in Gomorrah language and that was around the same time I started to learn language um my my parents didn't grow up knowing language we had a handful of words in the house and so I learned once I got into high school of my Aboriginal teacher there and I took the language back home and was able to teach my mum and um, so language really really gave me uh, a platform to be able to sing I guess um, yeah it's beautiful the way it's worked to be able to find that aspect of my culture and my identity and mm -hmm. connect so deeply to it um but being the music lover that I am it was um much easier for me to you know learn these this language through song mm -hmm. and so that's that's what I would do and um I've been lucky enough to to be able to perform and I've gone on to translate some songs of my own and and write songs of my own in language as well. So that's uh, that's when I started, when I started to learn at high school and realised the responsibility I had to language and its revival. Mm. So interested that you say it gave you the platform to be able to sing because it sounds almost like for you learning language really unlocks something, perhaps in the way you understand how voice works, how notes work, how sounds work. Yeah, that's that's right. And um, it was a part of my life where I really started to kind of come out of my shell and feel confident within myself and being reconnected to language and understanding myself and my heritage mm -hmm. uh, even more and going, starting that uh, journey of, I guess, law um, and learning, learning more about myself. It, it helped me open up enough to stand in front of people and, and sing. Yeah, right. Now, the song and language you're perhaps best known for is your version of Flame Trees, Cold Chisel Flame Trees, which is in English and in language. And I can only yeah. imagine that you performed that live enough times that people wanted a recording of it. And it's a beautiful recording. And I've seen you perform it live and um, and you do it so well. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess the response to it has has been strong. Let's put it that way. It really has, yes. Um, I just I love that song, and you know when I first started out professionally, I was on the you know, the, the covers circuit mm -hmm. and dying to you know sing my own music, and people would always scream <laughs> out for uh, for you know a cold chisel song, and I'd say, okay, well what about this one? And during COVID um, lockdown, I was stir crazy. I went, you know what? What if I I translated this song and and got some help from some elders and some linguists to you know put the chorus of this song into language and help me connect with it um and I just I put it like a cover up on Facebook and it went it went crazy crazy it's got so many views and um yeah people really wanted me to record it and so uh to record it and release it professionally I had to run it by Cold Chisel and the original songwriters um Don Walker and the estate of uh, Steve Prestwich and um you know I sent them the lyrics and the translation and they they loved it they heard the version too that I had recorded and ready to go and um they said yeah go ahead um release I it bet well. they did yeah it really <laughs> um provides a, a different interpretation of the song I think because it's a woman singing it as well well, you're a woman singing it so it's it's just another way of looking at at that story in that song yeah yeah it really is and um you know the translation kind of dips into what we romanticize as 
you know, Gomorrah people and First Nations people and how that's different to like Western cultures, like Western cultures will um, romanticize the heart. Like you feel love within your heart. Whereas if um, in Gomorrah culture, you know, the ear is a romantic thing <laughs> to be able to hear someone and understand someone um, and, and, and see them for all their worth and, and all their knowledge that they hold and, and things like that. So um, for us, the way that we receive those things is through our, through our ear and through right. you know, listening and learning. And so the ear is really romanticized and that's kind of part of the translation as well. And um, so, yeah, it was a, it was a beautiful thing. And I, I love that so many people have heard it as mm. well, not just the mob. Um, and everyone has heard this, this ancient, beautiful language. Mm. Well, as I said, it's a showstopper, uh, whether it's live or recorded. So if anyone hasn't heard it, they should seek it out immediately. And speaking of showstoppers, uh, although you did not win Star Maker this year, you put on such a great performance in Bicentennial Park. But I imagine it was nerve wracking because it was a big show. Like there were 10 of you had to come out. It was a crowd. It was this band. It was all very quick. What was it like for you? Oh, it was it was wild. It was one of the best experiences I've ever had. And even though it was a competition, it, it just felt like a showcase. It felt uh, we felt very nurtured and um, very seen and, and heard. And it was a, a great platform to be on. Um, so, yeah, it didn't quite feel like a competition at all. It, it, it felt like this this really cool showcase. And um, yeah. 2022 has been a great year um, for my for myself. I've been able to to go really far since then. Well, and you obviously liked it enough to come back for more because you are once again a grand finalist. And just so people who are watching this understand, it's not like oh, you've written a nice song. It's 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 judges choosing that. You have to be at a certain point in your career to be eligible for Star Maker. So to to be chosen again, I would imagine you were pretty stoked. Oh, I'm I'm thrilled. I'm honored. It's this like overwhelming feeling of, uh, and I guess, mm, what's the word? Confirmation that you are doing things right, um, and you're seen and heard within this industry to be to be back again um, for the second year in a row. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all the, all the stars aligning, you know, it's a really good feeling. Um, and even though, you know, country music, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's competitive. I'd say we're out here, you know, a lot of the artists within the Australian country music industry really support each other. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's really good to, to be a part of it again. We'll see see how we go it's a tough competition again though Look, uh, girl, it is let me tell you <laughs> I'm gonna have to sing my butt off uh <laughs> do you start because that's as you know that that the this year's final happened in April because of the delayed festival the next final is happening in January um so that's do you start preparing now like or I suppose you've already chosen your songs it's more a question of do you start gearing yourself up or do you wait till a bit closer to the time Yes, no, it's um as soon as you find out you you start training. You right. you hit the gym, you hit the weights, you you hit the rehearsal room. <laughs> well, because yeah, it's physical. Singing is physical. You do need to keep in shape. <laughs> you do. You really do. You need to keep your vocal chops up, your playing chops, um, continue to write no matter what. Um, because you know, if you win, you get you get the EP, you get to go to Nashville, you get to go on the road with the car and the fuel card and um, you get to just be a part of all these incredible things um, with the support of Star Maker and, and the people involved. And so, yeah, you start to get ready straight away, you choose your songs and sing them every day until until competition day. That's what I'll be doing anyway. Yeah, right, because if you win, as you said, EP, that means you need to have songs ready to record. So that's why you're writing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, although, like, you can, you know, write write new songs and mm -hmm. set up co-writes over in Nashville and things like that, um, but it's good, to, it's good to have those ones, even if they 
never make it off the cutting room floor. Um, yeah. Good practice. <laughs> yeah. Now a song that you did write that has been released is Bounce Back, your latest single. So what inspired that? Oh, I don't know if I can say it on camera. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't have to. Let's just say it's about, um, I suppose we could say it's about resilience if it's bouncing back. <laughs> yeah, resilience. <laughs> No, I got I got a really nasty email um, one day from, well, I won't say who, but, you know, the song kind of explains it anyway. Um, <laughs> and look, I'm, I'm someone who just, I mind my own business. I take care of my baby. Um, I work on my career and I, you know, have my, my day job as well. And um I really keep to myself and I like to help build others up. And so, you know, when I feel like someone's nasty to me, I, I take that to heart yeah. and, um, and I write a song about it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's for anyone who has been put down and you you push through no matter what, you um, keep your eyes on the prize. Yeah. Uh, and some other songs you have written that have been recorded are the songs for Charlie, which is the uh, name of the album as well. And Charlie is your daughter. Was it harder writing for kids than for adults? Well, I spent uh, most of last year writing writing for the album. Um, you know, there's four original songs, but four songs that have been translated into Gamilaroi that are covers. Um, it was a beautiful thing. I don't think it was hard. Um, the inspiration was definitely there. Uh, I feel like it was it was easier, you know, because I do I do have a baby. Um, well, she's not a baby; she's four. So I tapped into what I thought her perspective might be, and and wrote songs like that. Going to Nan's house, yeah. I want to be your friend. Um, Charlie's lullaby is based on a song that my mum used to sing to me, and it was a song that was just kind of hummed and didn't have any words, and so I put put words to the song um yeah so uh, I had an incredible time writing that and I feel like it's a it's my masterpiece oh well I've got to say um I'm not a child but I really enjoy it so I think adults can listen to it as well um <laughs> because great songs are great songs basically and these songs the songs on songs for Charlie do describe some common experiences so um I think everyone can relate to them. Uh, and unfortunately, we are out of time for this time, but I hope to talk to you again, Lauren, because it's been such a great pleasure. So the latest single is Bounce Back. You will be on the Star Maker grand finalist stage in January. Anyone who's in Tamworth, I thoroughly recommend that show. It's such a great show. Congratulations on the song on Star Maker. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs>